Hello beloved of God, welcome to this video. This is a fellowship video and uh, I'm here with my dear brothers Norm, Colin and Liam. And uh, uh, we also prepared a slideshow. Uh, this show, uh, this slideshow belongs to a series called Freedom in Christ on Rivago channel. And uh, I have removed a lot of slides but still a lot remained so uh, I'm going to go over some slides very briefly and emphasize others longer okay let's start the the reason of this uh, the reason uh, uh, of this topic has to do with the fact that in within the body of Christ there are people who still seem to think that works are very important to uh, get salvation for uh, to be saved and that means to have life Ionian that means life in the oncoming eons that is not the case and we will talk about that today show from scripture but also from just universal laws that will be recognized I hope and uh, to show you how it works and to prove to you that works are not uh, uh, consequential for life Ionian works will be uh, like an automatic thing but it will it, it is not consequential for life Ionian so let's start uh, please change slides uh, I have uh, Liam who is fantastic with these things and he is helping me to uh, to uh, share his screen so universal laws uh, let me do it like this yes so we know that everything comes from one source and by the way if you guys want to say something in between please uh, interrupt no problem uh, so everything comes from the same source so that is very important to already keep in the back of your mind and there are some laws that we maybe don't recognize in the spiritual world but we see it working in the natural world well I can tell you that natural laws are just a visible form of spiritual laws it starts always in the spiritual because because God is spirit and it shows for us as in our soulish bodies it shows in nature in this case let's look at a tree first light then fruit do you recognize that first light the tree needs to have sunlight first in order of course uh, humid and water in order to produce fruit you recognize that guys yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean uh, it, it would make more sense to say first the seed and then the fruit right oh but that's from another angle uh, okay. yes of course first the seed but the seed will bring forth new life new life because the seed itself dies oh okay. so, that, that's so another that's right. another principle it's another principle okay so but okay, this okay, one okay. is a, an existing tree needs to have sunlight and everything that comes with it in order to produce healthy fruit and that's the same spiritually first we have to have light and then we can carry fruit and fruit is our deeds the things we do the fact that we are making videos as now as an example is producing fruit but we cannot do that if we don't understand what we're talking about so if we don't have light understanding we cannot produce fruit so that's the principle here the second one authenticity versus relationship um, yeah let 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 let, let me ma what would you choose guys what would you choose what is more important uh, well a relationship is to it, it can be good or bad but versus often test when it's 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 not a bad thing it's all it's always a good thing whereas relationships can be toxic they can be bad and good yeah yeah other other uh opinions views no i was just gonna say yeah relationships can can not necessarily be a good thing it can be a, yeah. a bad relationship exactly uh, similar to what liam had said and authenticity relates to love which is uh a great thing and that we see uh yeah. god's agape love exactly and it starts relatively speaking with yourself love for yourself uh mm -hmm. only then can you be authentic if you love yourself but when can you love yourself 
what is the best way to love yourself? Um, is when you accept yourself. Yeah. And when do you accept? What is the easiest way to accept yourself? Unconditional. Uh, when, when you're Do at peace with yourself. Love. Sorry. When you're at peace with yourself. Yeah, but but how can you be at peace with yourself? Unconditionally. When you when you know yourself. Yes, but again the same question. <laughs> Because <laughs> you can know yourself, but you don't accept yourself. How can you come okay. to that point that you accept yourself? unconditionally what is the easiest God way accepts you when exactly you love if you realize and believe and really get uh, the coin fallen that god loves you unconditionally your own mm -hmm. creator loves you unconditionally that is the easiest way to love yourself unconditionally and let me just one more question to go to the little hole and that is Why does God love his creation unconditionally? Because he loves himself unconditionally. Exactly, exactly. Okay, that's the easy one. So, authenticity versus relationship. Uh, I'm going to give one big hint, and that is look always at the term, long term or short term. Life is being led on the long term, always. If you drive a car, where do you look? If you drive on a straight road, And you drive at the speed of like 80 miles an hour. Where, where do you look? Do you look 50 you, meters ahead? Yeah. Yes, you 50? Look in front of you. No, you look no. right. Uh, you know, you look what's right in front of you. Yeah, not only that, you look at the farthest point on the horizon. Mm -hmm. You look at the most far point that you can see and you steer your a car towards that point that's very important so that point is your focus and you drive towards that and then you will drive stable in a stable way so that's how life needs to be lived as well always look at the long term because that is the default uh, mindset so if you look at that and you look at authenticity versus relationship um The thing is that authenticity is you start with yourself. You be yourself. And if you are yourself and you accept yourself, you are happy. You are happy regardless of any relation. You are happy because you are happy with yourself. That's the point. Relationships are more on the short term because you are looking for a nice relationship. But sometimes even that can also grow sour And uh, you can grow, uh, what is the word, um, uh, to apart. in different, uh, apart. You can grow apart, exactly, in different directions. So, so relationship is only aimed toward the short term, relatively speaking. Authenticity, that is where it begins. Okay, rules. Follow the rules or ownership, taking that responsibility. The, Sorry? That is the ownership. Of right? course, of course, because ownership makes you take responsibility for what you do you you don't blame others so true follow rules is always not taking responsibility also blaming the boss one because it's his rules you see the difference um principle of majority and minority we are i'm just a hint make it easy for you guys and i know it's an easy one uh we are living in an evil eon Yeah, so the majority are going to be wrong, whereas the minority are going to be right. Yes, it's like a rule in this eon. It's an evil eon, so the majority yeah. is always wrong. Minority yeah. It's like the upside right. down pyramid uh, exactly. rule, exactly. everything is flipped right now. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay, and the last one uh, in this slide, the pain of regret versus the pain of discipline. Uh, the pain of discipline is superior. Of course, of mm -hmm. course, because you can, in order to be successful in life on the long term, remember, it has to be the long term, then you have to have pain of discipline in the short term to invest money, to invest time, to invest energy in order to be successful on the long, in the long term. So that's how you life works. Sorry, Colin? Past, of course, even. 
I was just gonna say you can't change the past either way, yeah. right? So regret exactly. doesn't really do anything. Yeah, the pain. For fruit. Exactly. So that's why the pain of regret is like a thousand times worse than the pain of discipline. Okay. So exactly. please, next slide. So very quickly, this one, a uh, lot of, we know this one already. What is the evangel in this current administration of the evangel of Paul? Well, that is that all people will be saved. God is the savior of all mankind, especially of believers, which means that believers come first. That's all. They, uh, they come er in earlier, and that's just because of a choice of God far be uh, before we were born. And of course, uh, 1, Timothy one, uh, uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 3 and 4, especially the fact that God, our Savior, wills that all mankind be saved and come into a, real a realization of truth. The question becomes, will he get what he wants? Of course he will. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, because he's not only laughing, but he's also almighty. He's all-powerful. That's He's the point. Omnipotent. He's omnipotent, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, next slide, please. So, what is the so we just mentioned the evangel? That means good news. Everyone will be saved eventually, uh, or ultimately. And on what foundation is this evangel built? That is in uh, that is First Corinthians fifteen three b to four, which says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was entombed and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures this is the message of the cross of christ which is also Four. mentioned by paul in first corinthians 1 i think first uh, i think 23 there in, uh, in the neighborhood what did you want to say liam Oh, I was just saying that it's the core. You know, that is how God saves all, all of humanity. It's through the death and tomb and a resurrection exactly. of Jesus Christ for all of our sins. And it's not just our sins like mine and yours, but it's all of sin. So sin exactly. has been defeated at the cross. And because yes. of that, God is going to save all of humanity. Exactly. What Jesus is on the, did on the cross has a consequence for all of humanity and for all ways. So this is, not, of course, this is foundational. All right, next slide, please. And uh, also a little remark here. Before uh, we just went through the foundation of the evangel that Christ died for our sins, was entombed, and has been roused the third day. Well, before, that, before Paul wrote that one, he affirmed seven times. And that is in the two previous verses, verse 1, 2, and 3a, which he, you, you can see that. For yourself, I make known to you, brethren, the evangel. So now he is announcing it. But then he affirms seven times, which I bring to you, the evangel which also you accepted, in which also you stand, through which you are saved, if you are retaining what I said in bringing the evangel to you. Outside, and look at this, this one, believing faintly is number six. Look at that, the number of yeah. men. Oh, the number yeah. of men, you see. Exactly outside and accept you believe faintly and then number seven i give over to you among the first what also paul himself accepted obviously so this is important to realize how important that foundation is that he will mention after first three a next and slide even uh, five sorry peter and even yeah. verse five uh, if you are so the power right that's number five grace or the power of it is yes. if you are retaining it Yes, what exactly, I said. Exactly. You have to be able to retain the word too. You not yeah. just like reading it and not really understanding it, right? The exactly. Correctly getting the word of truth is what you use, right? Definitely, definitely, yes. Yeah. So, so would you guys uh, give me an example of what a feigned belie belie believer is? Like, what is a feigned believer? Who can who can react on that before I react? Well, I would say as someone who believes in Christ, but they don't believe on christ they believe that he exists they believe like in the case of a christian like they believe that he exists and he died and things like this but they don't believe on him they don't believe that he saved them two thousand year, years ago they think that it's their faith that saves them they yes. think that it's their free will choice that saves them exactly. they think that so it's, it's the salvation comes out of them that would be a great example of a faint believer yeah definitely mm -hmm. i would say a faint believer 
can believe in Christ, but he doesn't have the faith of Christ. Yes. There's a difference there too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. but that that's another Christ. That's also another Christ yeah. because they don't believe in the faith of Christ. And it is the faith of Christ what happened in Gethsemane. That is the, the very thing that led him to the cross, that led him to yeah. undergo all those humiliations, etc., etc. It's his faith that led him to undergo that. So that's very important, yeah. foundational. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide, please. <coughs> so uh, we went through this one already. I just wanted to uh, uh, it reiterate at the bottom. You see that there are bullet points there because Satan has managed to put a bomb under at least one bomb under every bullet point. And one of the most important bombs is death. What is death? Yeah. That is complete, totally unconsciousness, total unconsciousness. It's very important because Jesus didn't exist for three days when he was dead. He did not exist. Uh, I also uh, yes, please. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to to add that uh, Christ, his faith in in going into to to, de to death, right? Yep. Uh, it also shows proves God's his agape love, right? But yeah, uh, of course. His faith is it's not has has nothing to do with merit. It has to do with love. It has yep. to do with his love for his father. Exactly. And not exactly. of anything. Even though Christ came to fulfill the law, yeah, he, uh, it it was through love that he yeah. fulfills the law, right? Yeah, and the law is also righteous. The law is also from his father, but that's a, mm -hmm. that's a different method that his father used to show at the end of the day that no one but no one is able to keep the law. That's the whole point. That is the whole point. Only Christ kept the law perfectly. That he was the only mm -hmm. one. Okay, next slide, please. So I'd like to say something just before we of go course, on. So, of course, so what, so what the adversary has done is he has, he has twisted uh, the good news and he's created these doctrines to hide oh, yeah. the good news. So we yep. see that Christ died. Yeah. Well, he'll say that death is existence in the heavens or on the earth or in Valhalla sub some somewhere. So they yeah, believe in a, the a immortality of the soul. Yeah, exactly. So what that does is it counteracts the evangel. So if you believe that the dead are not dead and you can't be a believer, you know, because if you don't believe that Jesus Christ literally died, he did not exist for three whole days yeah. for our sins. It's not just for mine or for your sins. It's for all of sin that he was entombed and that he has been roused by the one true God yep. and you can't be a believer. Yep. So the doctrines of the Trinity, the doctrines of hell, the doctrines of free will, and the doctrines of the immortality of the soul, they counteract the evangel. They prevent you from believing in the evangel, which is the death and tomb and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you believe yeah. that he's God, then he's not the Messiah. He's not the son of God. If you believe that he didn't literally die, he didn't die for our sins. If you believe that God is going to send billions of individuals to hell then he didn't die for all of our sins which means you didn't which means you don't believe that he died for our sins so i just like to yeah. point that out yeah very good okay well okay. uh i'm not gonna go through this one because that's a whole um uh, explanation but let's let's uh believe that sin is a result from evil it started with evil and from evil came sin because evil breaks means breaking destroying and that it break it uh, it breaks the route so to speak and then it goes down and that's evil and the fact that the route has been broken that means that the goal has been missed and that is what sin means missing the goal mm -hmm. so i yeah. think i'm going to leave it there you, a, any remark here i would no. just yeah i would just like to add uh, that love right is First Corinthians chapter 15, love is not taking into account of evil. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Rather than being angry or anything about, about per people persecuting him or all the things that he was going through, he still kept the faith. Oh, yeah. And he just looked towards his father, right, through yep. love and didn't take into account of the evil that was happening. Exactly. Definitely. All right. Next slide, please. Well, uh, we know, uh, and if you didn't know, then you know now that God is the creator of evil. Of course, 
And because he is the creator of evil, he has evil under control, in his control, everything according to his plan. Isaiah 45, 7 is the go-to text for it, uh, that God is the maker of good and creator of evil. He takes the responsibility for that. But also Isaiah 50, uh, 54, 16, where he said that God, I, says Yahweh, I created the ruiner, not period, no, I created the ruiner to harm, to harm. It says it specifically. So you cannot go around that, dear Christian. You have to believe it because God's word says so. And of course, Ecclesiastes uh, 1.13, where it says that it is an experience of evil that Elohim, Yahweh, has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. That is the short-term reason. That is the short-term investment that we will undergo, whether we know it or not, we undergo it. And then on the long term, we will see whether we know it or not right now, we will see in the long term what this evil was good for. Next slide, please. Sin is a condition for salvation. Please keep that in mind as well, because that's why we still sin, not because we like to sin, but because we are in these mortal bodies. Sin is the plant that is growing gratefully on the uh, soil that is called death or mortality sin grows in death that's the whole point that is the that is the ratio between death and sin so as long as we are in mortal bodies that are dying and we are that means that we will sin we will keep on sinning so that's why sin is not an issue if we believe here in our mind that we are free from sin, that sin cannot lord it over us no more. If we believe that truly we stop talking about sin, stop talking about mm. sin because yes, you give it attention, elephant, right? You yeah, give because it if you keep bringing up... Uh, yeah. Oh, look, uh, th don't think about a pink elephant. Don't think about a pink elephant. Exactly. Don't think about a pink elephant. Yeah. Your brain cannot handle the word no or not. Cannot handle it. So if I say don't think about blue, of course you will think about blue. You will see blue mm -hmm. all over. So the whole yeah. thing is that the brain cannot handle the word not. So do not talk about sin. And now I'm doing the same thing. You see how it, how it works? <laughs> yeah. So talk, focus on Christ. Focus on what he has accomplished and focus on our expectation. So Romans 11:32 this is God's method uh, God's method God locks up all together in stubbornness short term investment that he should be merciful to all in the long term that's mm. how it works all the time all the time and of course we became a theater to the world and to messengers and to men so our body humiliates us, and that's the whole point. That's Which what means we, we're going to sin. Yeah, we're exactly. Going to sin. That's, that's a plan. guarantee, a guarantee. So we shouldn't worry about it. We shouldn't even give attention to it. Focus on Christ and what he has accomplished on the cross and the long-term result from that. That is, that is uh, what we are to focus on. Okay, next yes. slide, please. Again. Uh, uh, some other examples of the fact that sin is conditional for salvation. Who needs a physician? The healthy or the ill? Of course the ill. 1 Timothy 1, 15. And remember, everyone who still is, is in the realm of sin and thinks about not sinning, look as, at what Paul is saying here. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners foremost of whom was I? Was I? No. Am I? That's what Paul says. Foremost of whom am I? Present tense. So Paul was still a sinner until his death. He remained a sinner just like we are sinners. We were not sinners, we are sinners. But we have received grace. And the fact 
that we realize that we are sinners and receive grace, that makes us so grateful. That makes us so thankful. And that is, you, that is humbling. That is the whole point. Every human has an illness, uh, no matter who it is. So, uh, any uh, re uh, re remark here on this slide? Yeah, I would like to ask you all a question. Why do we sin to begin with? Like, why, why is the reason why we sin? Like, why do we miss the mark? We, I think there's a few different reasons, but I think it has to do with misunderstanding and listening to, uh, well, obviously the adversary, but not understanding the truth and having enmity towards God, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's technically true, yes, but I'm more asking the question of the literal case. Like, why do we sin? Why do we miss the mark? Like, what did we, uh, what do we have? What, what we all have right now, which is called, which is causing us to miss the mark in sin. What is it? Original, original sin from Adam. Nope, it's mortality. We're dying. That's what causes us to sin. Mm -hmm. We are dying right now, and we inherited that from him which causes us to sin. So to say to someone like me or you to just don't sin, you're basically saying to them uh, to become immortal or to just die. The reason why we sin is because we are mortal, it's because exactly. we're dying. Exactly. So at the end, death as the last enemy will be abolished, and that will be the second death. By the way, Romans 5, verse 12, you can read it uh, as a viewer, um, and there it says that we have inherited death from adam not sin we have not inherited sin as the catholic church is saying we have inherited death from adam that's the scriptural truth and because yes, we are born as mortals we are born a sinner that's the point yes yes it's on, it's on the basis of us being a mortal which causes us to sin yep exactly and uh there's one thing that I forgot to bring up uh, when you were talking about the destruction of the worlds. Uh, that's when sin cave came into the creation. But uh, before that, God had a plan to remove sin from his creation before sin came into humanity. Yep. So think about that. So yep. he planned to save all of humanity before humanity was created. Yep. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Everything was And we were chosen be already planned. before, before yep. that entered, right? Yep. Definitely. Yeah. That is a reason eh, why, why Ephesians says that, why scripture said that we are, were chosen in Christ before the disruption. That means before there was sin in the world. That's the point. Yes. Okay, next slide, please. So first, uh, this is another principle, very important. God makes sure that the contract's crest will be maximized before it get be gets better. So first, the, the, the evil has to be uh, going down to its worst. We, and in the world right now, it's very bad. However, in the end times, it will accelerate to the X form. It will be terrible and it will go, the evil will grow to its maximum, so to speak. And that is where God wants it. Because from there, then God will start the good. And then God will reveal the good and the righteousness and of course at the end the grace which is way more than all the evil uh, combined so we know that in first uh, second corinthians 4 5 through 6 that uh let's let me uh, um let me emphasize the one that is uh, uh striked on the strike and that is that the god who says that out of darkness light shall be shining you see the contrast there is he who shines in our heart with a few to the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ so this is very important our bodies need to humiliate us and that makes us look at god that humbles us and makes us look at god that's how it works Yes, which makes sense uh, in the verse in, I, uh, in Isaiah, where he said that he created the darkness, but he formed the light. So he didn't yep. create the light. Nope. And that's because he is the light. Yeah. And so in order for us to see the light, to see God and who he is, his grace and his love, he created the darkness yep. just so that we could see him. Exactly, exactly. 
The good was already there. Next slide, please. Now, uh, another uh, example of maximum contrast, the earth first became chaos and vacant and darkness over the waters. So the situation is almost hopeless. And then it comes, let there be lights. It's all the same principle. Against a dark background, God shows his greatness. The darker the backgr background, the better God's greatness will shine. That's how it works. Next slide, mm -hmm. please. I was just going to add quickly, Peter. That yes, also please. reminds me of just the, the storyline principle, too, in general. Whenever we look at all the, the movies that we love, Star Wars or whatever fairy tale, Romeo and Juliet, always. it always has that crazy yeah. contrast principle, yeah, right? Where always. the back shadow is darkness. Yeah, it begins normal and then it goes wrong. And then a fight happens and then the good one wins and it ends better than how it starts. That's, exactly. that's the, that's the yep. principle of every story. Yes. Here again, uh, how about Romans three, five? Now, if our injustice is commanding God's righteousness, what shall we declare? Always the same principle. First, the reduction, and then the display of power. Jesus first put m puts mud on the blind man's eye before having the eye washed in the Jordan River. Elijah makes the challenge even harder by getting the altar of, uh, of the uh, of the so-called uh, uh, the that that you know that bet that he had with the ba Baal priests. Yeah, he yeah. makes it harder by getting the altar all wet with water so that the fire wouldn't even work or have a, have a lower chance to work and the fire came and it 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 licked up all the water in one and sense this is, and this is to display the glory of god and the power exactly exactly yeah. and god makes it much harder for gideon i love that story of gideon makes it much harder to reduce his army from <laughs> thirty two thousand to a merely 300 oh my god that's sad humanly speaking yeah, yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's, a re that's really sad that that's the whole thing god and made... god, because god shows his power that's the whole thing it's the same principle always okay next slide uh norm you wanted to say some 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 of that oh no, i was just gonna say god makes uh, what we see as impossible he makes it possible Yep. Exactly. exactly. Which is why he chose the weak, the stupid, and the ignoble. Exactly. To display and his that, power and his grace. Yes. And that, that's why uh, we see things in, uh, in the relative, but God's absolute yep. is, is displayed here. Yeah. With the impossible odds, he makes it possible. So if, we're the only ones who are seeing it as impossible. Well, yeah. God's laughing at all this. Exactly. Saying, what? <laughs> Impossible? Well, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, so the best way to display his grace is for him to create a background of darkness. So what happened? And this is a secret that probably no Christian knows. Romans 5.20. Yet. In the, so this is the real re reason of law. Yet law came in by the way so that the offense should be increasing. But why? What is the long-term reason? Because yet where sin increases, grace super exceeds. And that can only be shown that super exceeding grace against the background of more sin, of a deep sin. That's the whole point. And I already so, went. So he, so yeah. he maximized the sin, yeah. so he could display his grace. That's amazing. That's yes. genius. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, uh, Paul um, also said, "I'm going to read verse 16." But therefore was I shown mercy that in me, the foremost, so the foremost of sinners, Jesus Christ should be displaying all his patience. Look at that, Paul. Or the, the Pharisee Saul, he was terrible, we know that. And that's why Christ should be displaying all his patience for a pattern 
of those who are about to be believing on him for life Ionian. Wow. So he took the, the, the terrible, nasty Pharisee Saul and he took him as an example, as a pattern for all of us. This is fantastic. Amazing, which That's explains the, it's, it's, it's like God chose the believers of the body of Christ from an insane asylum. That's exactly. literally what he's doing. He's he's choosing yeah. the sinners. He's not cho cho choosing the righteous. Yes, you know he's exactly. choosing the sinners. Yep, exactly. Okay, next one. Uh, so of course there is a big difference. We know that between doing and being, it starts with being. That's the whole point. We can also see that in Romans twelve two, be uh, um, renewed in your mind, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Uh, and what comes first? The renewal comes first, and then the transformation, of course. So here it says uh, in Romans 6, 18, 19, now being freed from sin. Stop. You see what's happening here. We are still in a, right, a, a exactly. mortal body. We are still yeah. in a mortal body. We are sinning daily. We are sinning hourly. And it says now being freed from sin. We are already freed from sin. That's the yes, whole point. And that's a changing of the mind to yes. realize that you are dead to sin. Exactly. So why would you want to go out there and sin, which you will or, or not? It doesn't matter. Just don't put your mindset on sin, just like what you said. Exactly. If you put your mindset on sin and you're trying to perfect your flesh and trying not to sin, it means that you're a slave to something that you're dead to. Yep. And look at the confirmation in the second sentence. Paul says, as a man, am I saying this? Because of the infirmity of your flesh. Our flesh is infirm. There is no exception. That's always the case. And that's why he says it, that we are being freed from sin. That's the whole point. The conclusion is, our flesh is still weak while we are already freed from sin. So what we do in life has no effect whatsoever on who we are in Christ. We die Very important. for a new creation. We are right? a new creation, exactly. Our exactly. life is hidden together with Christ in God. Yes, and, and that's a... We, we, don't, we no longer see sin because to us it no longer exists. Exactly, exactly. We totally... Ex we, don't, body we, now. we don't reckon it's with something sin. Of, it's something of the mind, just like what you were say, saying. You know, sin exists in, in the sense of this person's going to sin, he's going to miss the mark. Yep. But in God's eyes, sin has been dealt with at the cross. And eventually, God will just eliminate all of sin and death outright because of what Christ accomplished for all of us on the cross. Exactly. And as the verse in Romans chapter 6 says, we, we, have, we have been freed from sin and now you are enslaved to righteousness. Yes. We're enslaved to the righteousness of Christ. Yes. He is the righteous one. And, and we that, are reckoned as righteous through faith. Yes. And that burden is light. <laughs> That burden of ens being enslaved to righteousness is very light. <laughs> okay, yes. uh, next one, please. Let's continue. The faith of Jesus is the basis of our justification. And justification means we are pronounced innocent by God. Innocent. No guilt whatsoever. Galatians 2.20 With Christ have I been crucified, and we also... Yet I am living, no longer I, but living in me is Christ. That's a fact. Now that which I am now living in flesh, I am living in faith. That is of the Son of God. That's His faith I am living in. Who loves me and gives Himself up for me. Romans 3, 21, 22, very important. Yet now, apart from law, a righteousness of God is manifest, being attested by the law and the prophets. Yet a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith. For all, that means no exception, for all, but already on all who are believing. Because who have received faith from God. For there is no distinction. This is scripture. This is the truth. And we are still in our mor mortal bodies today. So very important yes. to realize that. Which means we still sin, but God sees us as holy and flaw and flawless, despite yep. of our decaying flesh, which yep. causes us to sin. It's a mental thing, it's a renewal of your mind. Exactly. We're justified all our sins. Yep. This is where it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also it's out of his faith for our faith, right? So exactly. our faith 
is reckoned for his righteousness, which is not only just it's God's righteousness in yeah. Christ yeah. that is being Through shown. Christ. So we, yeah. we obtain something that we never could have done, even if we were perfect like or relatively perfect humans, yes. we never could have obtained God's righteousness in Christ, exactly. except through faith. Yep, compared which is a to gift. it's free. Yeah, exactly. Compared to God's righteousness, we are nothing, and we can read about that in Romans three, verse ten through twelve. No one is righteous, but let's not yeah. go there. Imagine, imagine giving the the some a grace so transcendently transcendent as that and it's it's simply through faith which relatively obviously in absolute it's chosen beforehand but fr from our perspective it's just like we can't even fathom it right exactly we can just say thank you god thank you yeah, yeah exactly definitely. that's that's what he wants he yeah. wants to yeah. pray yeah yeah, yeah. What's that he's gonna because he's god yes exactly <laughs> let's go to the next one so we know now as in Romans 5.20, that law produces sin. Law came in, by the way, that the transgression would increase, right? So it says it here also in Romans 7.7.8. 7, but let's read in the beginning. The law has come to make us realize that we need a savior because we cannot follow the law. We already mentioned that. So Paul says something very recognizable in Romans 7.7.8. 7, what then shall we declare that the law is sin? May it not be coming to that. But sin I knew not except through law. <laughs> For besides, I had not been aware of coveting, except the law said you shall not be coveting. Now, what does sin do? Getting an incentive. Sin gets an incentive through the precept. That's what's happening. And that produces in him, in us also, all manner of coveting. For, law, for apart from law, sin is dead. And this is so recognizable. You live in your house with your wife or husband and children. You are happy. You live just living your life. You have a nice car, etc. And all of a sudden, some voice comes from heaven and says, you shall not covet your neighbor's uh, car. And what will you do? Oh, uh, let me take a look how my neighbor's car is looking. And you have all, a all of really a sudden... really nice car. All of a sudden, his car is way nicer than yours, and you start to covet it, and you cannot think exactly. about something else anymore. That's how law works. That's the whole thing. Okay. Exactly. That's Sorry, I was just going to add to, and our law, right, is law is our escort to Christ. Yep. So whenever we finally get to Christ and we arrive at Christ, which is yep. that we realize nothing is out of us, that everything is from God and his love exactly. for us. Yeah. Then we no longer need to really focus on the law because we already have more than we already need by far in Christ. Yes, definitely. Yeah, true, true, true. Next one. So this is about calculation. And we are to learn to calculate as God calculates. That's the word reckoning. Thus you also be reckoning yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. That means you ignore the sin because you are dead to sin. To sin. Yet living to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or Romans 4, 5. That's even more direct. Yet to him who is not working. I repeat, not working. Yet is believing on him who is justifying the irreverent. Who is being justified? The irreverent. The sinners. Yes. And the one who is believing on God who is justifying the irreverent. His faith is is calculated or reckoned for righteousness and reckoning can uh, thus only be valid and operational if sin is still there do you yes, see that that's a yeah. really good point very good point so we're not literally right 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 righteous because if we were we don't need to be saved exactly it's not possible yeah, to be righteous that's right that's, exactly that's sin, sin is still there yes <laughs> yes reckoning wouldn't be even in in the game if we were already righteous then reckoning is not necessary Reckoning can only be valid and operational and working if sin is still in our life, present in our life. Okay, let's continue. Very good point. Yeah. This is a well-known one also, so that 
My beloved, as according as you always obey, not as in my presence only, but now much rather in my absence, now it comes, <laughs> with fear and trembling, be carrying your own salvation into effect. Ooh. So you oh, would. This, this, this is a great verse. So <laughs> yeah. we spoke about this norm a few days ago. Yeah. So yeah, it, okay. it says yeah. in like the KJV, uh, I don't know what it says in the KJV, but it's, it makes it seem like you have to earn your own salvation yeah. by how you walk. Yeah. When in reality, Paul is saying, how are you going to walk now that you know that you are saved? Yes. The fact that exactly. you know that you are saved affects your walk. Yeah. I'm saved. I to earn my salvation because i have all read 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 ready been saved very beforehand. important yes and that affects yeah. my walk i want so, to do good not to please god just because i have been saved yes and it is the same situation here as in uh, romans 12 verse 2 where it says be transformed by the renewal of your mind and if you don't think really thoroughly about it you would say transformation comes first and then renewal of your mind no, it, first the renewal of your mind on the basis of which you will be transformed. And it's a process. Same thing here. Be carrying your own salvation into effect. What comes first? Your own salvation comes first. It is a fact. It is already a fact. And then knowing that you are saved, you carry that in your daily life by first pondering it by first realizing it here is where it's happen happening and then it comes into outage let me put it like that or to uh, it comes into operation in our daily lives and to make it completely uh, finalized the next verse says for it is god who is operating in you to both will as well uh, as to work for the sake of his delight so he is doing everything. It already says it here. It's the confirmation. So, yeah, from so, all of, so all of our good works are God who is working in us. So if you go out there and you give uh, some food to a homeless man, that's God who is working in you. So you can't yeah. boast about that. Yeah. You can't boast about your bad deeds. And you can't boast about your good deeds. It's all of God's. And if he wants you to be bad, uh, to be good at something, he will give you the strength in order to do that. It's yeah. not your strength. Exactly. It's God's strength. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one, please. Oh, uh, I'm not going to read everything here, but this is more about the, the topic uh, uh, and the order. First you focus and then you contemplate so that it's a process of thinking and that it's, it's being it's like uh, it's digging a canal in your brain, so to speak, a new canal going towards your um, your, I would say, salvation or ex expectation. It's a new canal that is being digged in your brain by contemplation and that creates awareness. So that's why uh, Paul says uh, giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of him the eyes of your heart and your heart is here right by the way your heart is right here be having been enlightened for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling all of a sudden you start to see it and that's fantastic mm -hmm. because and that's that, a huge one yeah it's yeah. a huge one for yes Peter, huge because if if you're not doing that if you're not contemplating christ and god if you're not having your spirit and his wisdom and keeping a realization of him then it's very very easy to get led astray yeah even within yes. you know, minutes of dealing with other people you can get lost in emotion you can get lost in so many things yes and then yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. exactly which means we have to start we have to start we have to study the scriptures yeah we have to go exactly. into ephesians yeah. we have to go into romans and realize what has saved us past tense we are yeah. saved we don't need to work out our salvation and depending upon our works we get to keep salvation so it's not dependent upon wor our works we're not called in accord with our acts yeah you already God have more than, than saved yeah. us. past tense just, exactly i was just going to say you in christ right we already have more than anything we could ever obtain life exactly. aeonian yeah we would never have been able to we would we'd be dying in a few years if it weren't for christ oh right? yes oh yes 
And just to be sure, oh, Norm, you wanted to say something? Uh, would it be right to say that a feigned believer <laughs> has not perceived what is the expectation of his calling right in yes. the middle of of the stream? Yes, I, I would I'm, say I'm, so, yes. yes. Because if they did perceive it, then they would have been a believer, but then they would have lost the faith, I, 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 I guess. Right. But a feigned believer does not understand what has saved them. A feigned believer thinks that salvation is an offer. Salvation is a declaration. You have been saved by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We are God's achievement. We don't accomplish right. salvation. So a faint believer will try to manipulate that. They'll say, well, salvation is 99% God, but it's 1% you. And you need to fill in the gap. That's what a faint believer will say. Yeah, that's true. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, even well, if you are in the body of Christ and you don't like to study scripture, uh, just listen to other people. Let me put it like that still you do not lose your salvation because you have uh, uh, you have been sealed by the holy spirit of promise so that's very important okay yeah, let's continue you cannot lose your salvation so if you yeah. went out there and you shot up a hospital you're still not going to lose your salvation that nope. would be bad of course yeah. it's a bad deed and yeah. you will be chastised for that deed. yes but you're not going to lose your salvation because you didn't yeah. earn your salvation that's so the point. yes yeah. you could literally do whatever the hell you want in this yeah. life exactly. but the question is should you do that yeah should you yeah. do that no because paul tells us to walk in accord with the spirit which is love and evil it's very, deeds. It's not, it's not complicated. Yeah, evil deeds have consequences. That's also yes. like a universal law. You can eat ten Big Macs tonight, and you will find yourself in the hospital. Not very wise. Or you can rob a bank this afternoon, and you will find yourself in prison. Not very wise. So it has consequences. That's the point. All right, let's continue. Uh, yeah, we were also entombed together with him. Uh, through baptism into death, that even as Christ was roused from among the dead, through the glory of the Father, thus we also should be walking in newness of life. This is an exhortation. This is not a command. It is, oh, yeah. This is an exhortation. So Paul is exhorting us to live like that and to walk in newness of life, knowing that we are also roused together with Christ. Uh, everyone, this is how I believe it, everyone died with Christ. All humans died with Christ. However, we believers are also roused together with Christ. That's very important. So we are not dying to ourselves, as Christians say, but we are realizing that we are already dead. 2,000 years ago, we died. And that our old humanity was crucified with Christ just before that. Very important. And we've been roused and we're a new creation now. Yes, exactly. So now act like it. Go out there and be the person who you are. You are yeah. saved. Stop trying to become some, some something and just un understand that you are it. Yes. You are holy and flawless in the yes. eyes of God. And then just go out and be it. Exactly. That's the fact. Yes. All right, next one. So focus starts first here, and that results in a change of behavior. Colossians 3, 2 through 4. Be disposed to that which is above, not, on, not to that on the earth. For you died, there you have it again, and your life is hid together with Christ in God right now. Whenever Christ, our life, should be manifested, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. Look at this next one, Romans 6, 13. Nor yet pre be presenting your members as implements of injustice to sin, but present yourselves to God as if alive as from if. among the dead. And yes. your members have as, as, if. as if, yes, exactly. So it's not literally the case, but you can live like that already. You can present yourselves like that already. That's yeah. the point. As if we are immortal already. So think about that one. 
Yes. And yeah. how does one do that? They walk in accord with the spirit, and the spirit is love, it's joy, it's exactly. peace, it's patience, it's kindness, it's meekness, and faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. And we also un understand because we already is, is, is established this that God is the one who is working in us to do all the good things. Yes. So when exactly. we understand that, it takes off all the stress. All you you have to perform for God. Yes. We don't have to perform for Him. We are holy and flawless in his sight. When you realize that, it's a fact. then you can present yeah. yourself as if you are alive from among the dead, yes. which we're not, which means we're yeah. going to sin, but we don't look at our sin now. No. We're dead to it. And we, we just go out and we do good things. And if we, we totally we screw ignore it. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We totally ignore it. We live our yes, lives. Ignore we it. are ourselves. Yes, that's it. It's a, it's a win win, really. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You just, it's win -win. You nullify sin and then you just you do your best, right? Yeah. Exactly. You do. You live your Which life. Which is honestly God in the end, obviously, yeah. but yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And now this is an important one. There and then your members, Colossians 3 5, that are on the earth. Prostitution, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, greed, which is idolatry, by the way. But the, the question becomes. How do you deaden these members? By crucifying the members. But how? What is crucifying our members? That means that first, we recognize that they exist. First step. So you cannot crucify anything that doesn't exist. So if you work with stoning or shooting or stabbing, that is immediately. So that is not the answer. No, never the answer. Crucifixion is a specific way of killing. It's a slow way of killing. By, by how is that? By deprivation of breathing, food, and other uh, uh, important needs. So the result is dehydration, exposure to heat stroke, suffocation, exhaustion, and shock. You see what is crucifixion here. This means that if you crucify your members, what is the, the clue always? Pay no attention to them. Pay no attention yeah. to your flesh. Ignore it completely. Because your flesh is a narcissist. It wants you to pay attention to your flesh and to try exactly. and perfect it. As yep. soon as you miss the mark or you make a mistake, what your flesh wants you to do is say, oh, you made a mistake. You have to do better, better than that. You have to obstruct uh, your bootstraps and you need to perform for God because you made a mistake. And what you need to do is you need to ignore that. And exactly. you see yourself the same way that God sees you. Yes. Amen. That's the facts. Okay, let's continue. So, this is the key mindset. This position, eh? uh, this is all uh, uh, how it's called. The Greek is phroneo. This position, thinking, attitude, orientation, it's all mindset. That's also to exercise the mind, focus on the right things in scripture scriptural truths uh, to interest yourself in or with concern of our obedience toward or set your attention on regard safer think it's all about the mindset about exercising the mind and look at the confirmation in romans 14 14 where it says i have perceived and am persuaded in the lord jesus look at this that nothing is contaminating of itself except the one reckoning anything to be contaminating to that one it is contaminating look at that so if you eat your meal or you are about to to take your first uh, uh what is the word uh, bite and then someone says this is uh, this is uh, this meat or this food is dedicated to baal and you were just about to take your first bite. What will you do? <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> you, 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 if you are alone, if you are not within brothers with a weak faith, yeah. are you, are you, don't you do it? I would do it with a great smile. I would thank my God who created that meat and I would eat with a big smile because I exactly. don't reckon it. I don't reckoning. I'm not reckoning it to be contaminated at all because it's created by my own dad. That's the reason. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if exactly. you are That's in true. the neighborhood of a brother with a weaker faith who will take, uh, what is the word? Who will stumble if you eat. Yeah. If you eat and he will stumble looking at you, then you don't eat it because of love. That's another story. No. 
It, Lo- it was God himself in Acts 10 that uh, told Peter to eat of the unclean meat. Exactly. Told him three times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, there's yeah. proof that God made that holy yes. right there. You don't need any more proof. No, and you yet, don't need to. Don't believe it. Yeah, you don't need to pray extra for the food. <laughs> nonsense, all no. nonsense. You thank God, just like like spontaneously. You thank God for this food, and you eat with great taste. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and that's 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 a mindset that can be applied to me, to me, to many things. It's not just food. No, nope. you know, because when when you try to clean yourself, you become unclean. And when you understand that you are clean and justified in the eyes of God, then all is clean to you because not yep. nothing can contaminate you because yep. you're justified. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if you smoke or if you drink or if you eat un- unclean foods, you are clean to God. You're exactly. justified. You're holy and flawless in his sight. Yes. So when you understand that, when you understand that all things are of God and it's all a gift, you can just give thanks to him. But just as he said, you don't do it in front of a believer who's new to the faith. You would take offense to that because that would be selfish of you to do that. Exactly. Jesus, what you're actually explaining is freedom in Christ. Exactly. This whole program. That's the whole crux of it. Yeah, this is this is it. Yes. Okay, let's continue. Uh, Well, I just mentioned it already in the in the uh, earlier in this uh, meeting. Uh, tra- to be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is the important thing and it starts again with the renewing of our mind pondering the right things scriptural things and that will transform us it transforms our behavior Trans- it, stir- it first transforms our way of thinking and that of course transforms our behavior that's very important and here you also see in verse 3 that we are to be of a sane position as God parts to each the measure of faith, meaning that God gives us faith. We cannot muster of faith out of ourselves. It's not possible. So God gives faith to everyone and he gives it in certain measures. So uh, that also can change, by the way, while you yes. are living your life. Mm-hmm. So, so the example of the believer who has a who has uh, less faith than you because you ate the meat that was sacrificed to Baal. He is one who has been, he is the one who has less faith. Yeah. And, and, it, and the, that's, that's possible. Good. Yeah. yeah. And we, we yeah. are, we are to show the one with stronger faith are to show love because love is the important thing here. We, sh- yes. we are to show love to our brother, and not to maturity. eat it. Yeah, exactly. That's maturity. That's maturity. Exactly. So, there's a verse, I forget what verse this is. I think it's in First Corinthians where Paul says, all is allowed me. And that all means all. All yeah. things are allowed us, but not all is expedient. Exactly. So First if I was Corinthians to go out 10. there and, and I was to smoke, that yeah. itself is not bad. But let's say I was to smoke too much to the point yeah. where it becomes bad for my health. Yeah. Then it's a problem. Yeah. All is allowed me, but not all is expedient. Exactly. Exactly. By the way, I'll I think it's... To that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the the order is god gives faith the mindset begins to evolve and that creates the transformation that's it okay let's continue well uh we i'm going to go shorter now in the slides i think <laughs> um let's see um so again it's about ignoring flesh but how do you ignore flesh that is not by thinking, oh, I don't have to think, oh, I, I shouldn't think about flesh. I shouldn't think. No, it's about focusing on Christ Jesus. It's about focusing on our expectation. That is important. And it's about focusing on the invisible things. And we will see that later in this slideshow. But it's about the invisible things that are present now. Which are they? Faith, expectation, and love. Those are the gifts we are now, uh, uh, what is the word, uh, uh, bestowed upon. But uh, also invisible things now, which will soon be visibly present, like the things that will happen in our expectation in the future, when we are in our glorified body. So we can focus on those things. 
Okay, next one. And and at that point, we it will be impossible for us to sin at that point because exactly. we will be immortal. Because yes. mortality will have been destroyed at that point. Exactly, exactly. Impossible to sin. There will be a moment that that will be the case. And uh, when we are in that body and we are not sinning, then we will think back on these bodies. And after 10,000 years, we will think, oh, that was just a moment of sinning. This exactly. is the this is the real thing. Exactly. All right. So here, those of Christ Jesus crucify the flesh together with its passions and lust. Same thing. How do you do that? Not by thinking I have to crucify the flesh. No, but you crucify the flesh by focusing on Christ. That's it. But, but it and has been crucified. It's already been crucified. Yeah, in it's the already. Past. Yeah, it's in the past. So focus on Christ. Focus on your gratitude toward Christ, what he did for you. That is so important. So that's how you put the practices of the body to death. And then you will be living truly. You will be happy. Let's continue. Um, okay, we already mentioned this. Let's see. Um, focusing attention to the God, his Christ and the grace we have received and in which we stand. So again, you crucify something by depriving it of the attention it needs to thrive. So you ignore it. You think of Christ. That's the point. And you do yes. this when? When do you do this? After having sinned. Ah. Yes. You don't think about that sin anymore. You thank God and you focus on him. You there's don't no think guilt. about that sin. There, there's, yeah. there's no shame or guilt. You're exactly. free from that. Yeah, that's what the freedom in Christ is. That it's is freedom. it. Yeah, You're set exactly. free from this. Yeah. You have sinned Nothing now. Consequently is, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say Romans 8, 1. Nothing consequently is therefore condemnation to those in Christ. Yes. By yes. the way, let me let me. Uh, it's good that you mentioned that, Colin, because uh, it has a second sentence there. Something like um, not according to spirit, uh, not according to flesh. We are walking, but yeah, according to yeah. spirit. And that yes. is that is not in Scripture. Really? Silence, silence. It's not in, it cannot be in scripture. It's not in scripture. It's put there by church, by the clergy. Why? Because, and it's very early on putting there, just like Matthew 28, 19. Very early they have changed it. Why? Because now you see still like a relationship between nothing is now condemnation for those who are in Christ. And then all of a sudden, it's about works. Not according to flesh are they walking, but according to spirit. No. No. It is just period. Nothing whatsoever is condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Period. That's it. Very important. So are you, so are you saying that that part of that verse is not in the Greek? Like it's not no, in the manuscript? No, it's, in the, it's, in, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's not in the earliest manuscript. But the translations we use are all uh, are very often later manuscripts. That's the problem, and there right. it has been put in the Greek. Yes, I did not. I was not aware of that. So I'm going to yeah. do some uh, some research. On yeah, that. please. Is that please, like yeah. uh, is that like the same thing where it says uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the Trinity verse where it says that these three are one? You know, the That's, Father, the Son, and yeah. the Holy Spirit. Well, no, that is like easier. That. that one is easier. Because in the older manuscripts, you can see that it's not there. So it yeah. has been put there in there by the mo in the modern translations. So However, would this be the same case? Uh, uh, yes, this is the same. But, but, but no, this is not. This one is even older. Just like Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus gives the command, the commission. Um, you will baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the right. Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's not what he said. But you will see that even in the older manuscripts, you will see that already. But how mm. do we know that Jesus didn't say that? Logic. Because in the book of Acts, they baptized in the name of Christ. Exactly. Exactly. They have only <laughs> consistently baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of Christ Jesus. No, in the name of Jesus mm. Christ or Jesus so he said, in reality, baptize them in my name. That's what he said. You see the point? That's how, what church, mm -hmm. that's the contribution of church. Thank you, church. So <laughs> same, same, but it's the same thing with, uh, with Romans so. 8.1. 
You cannot say nothing whatsoever is condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. And immediately after that, you talk about your walk. Wait a minute. How about that? Well, yeah, well, we're assuming what that verse says. I mean, let's just say that that is in the uh, in the original text. You could say that not the, 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 the walking in accord with the flesh yes. is thinking that you can lose your salvation or that so something that you can do is condemnation to you. That is walking in accord with flesh. Well, what is to me very um, eerie and very nasty in that in that addition is that why if you combine those two, look at this. Nothing whatsoever is condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. That's what it says. And then as a less as a explanation, as an explanation, as if that is the cause. Not according to uh, flesh are they walking, but according to spirit. So what will you think if you really analyze that text? It means that if you now be begin starting to walk according to flesh, the you flesh. are not in Christ Jesus anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that is nasty. You see, that is very, uh, that's eerie. So right. that's, that's, okay. that's the point. So it's not true. It cannot be there. It's impossible. But okay, just for your information, let's continue uh, the slides. Next slide. So, of course, faith is the only way to get into the realm of grace. Very important. So, again, this is another expl uh, explanation about uh, uh, Jacob and uh, Esau. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, nah, let me read it. So, Paul explains here. What then shall we, declare, shall we be declaring? That the nations who are not pursuing righteousness overtook righteousness yet a righteousness which is out of faith, realization, yet Israel pursuing a law of righteousness into the law of righteousness doesn't outstrip. Wherefore, seeing that it is not out of faith, but as out of law works, they stumble on the stumbling stone. That is the point. Mm -hmm. They stumble over their own works. So please, everyone who is in the body of Christ, do not uh see your works as um conditional for salvation never next yeah, one please. because as we just said you are saved and yeah. you can't change that you yeah. have been saved past exactly. tense yeah your works you weren't on, on the earth two five thousand years ago you couldn't have saved yourself it's not po possible to save ourselves because yeah. we are dying yes we sin we cannot be righteous. It's not possible, Amen. which is why and we are not, reckoned as righteous. Through yeah. faith. And you're not even just saved salvation, Aeonian life, obviously, too, but you're also blessed as a son of God and blessed yeah. with every spiritual blessing among the celestials. There's already yeah. huge, massive blessings that are given to you, yeah. completely unmerited, completely in grace, yeah. completely nothing of you, yeah. just because God loves you that much. Yeah. Yeah. Unconditional. Yeah. And you exactly. were chosen in him before yes. the disruption. Amen. Next one. So, important advice if you want your body to follow, start here with your mind. Watch Christ, ponder Him, set your eye on Him. Next one, please. So, we went through the first ones already. Uh, how about freedom and risk on the one hand versus safety and security on the other hand? What would you choose? I would <laughs> say the freedom and risk. Okay, why? Because it's free, because it's freedom. <laughs> okay, okay. How about the risk? <laughs> no, 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 uh, no risk, no reward, as they say. What is that old saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good one, good one, good one. Yeah. Norm, would you say the same? Oh, I okay. I see what you kind of mean. I mean, like, well, we're we're free in Christ, but the safe that is the safety and security. The the freedom in Christ is the safety and security. I, I'm not looking for uh, a change in answer or something like that. Just uh, uh, I'm I'm just trying to elicit some some thinking, some pondering. That's it. Yeah, you'd have to develop the subject a little more so that I can give you yeah. my honest opinion. Okay, if you look on the one hand, freedom and risk. Uh, freedom is always is never without risk. Never, never. So freedom is always with risk. There is risk in freedom, always, theoretically, but it is the case. 
and the other one is safety and security and that is um, um, you feel safe you are in a, your small house you feel safe there no one can touch you or harm you etc so you feel secure as well that are the two uh, the two choices the two options but that safety and security is very very fragile because if some if something comes and upsets your apple cart then you can go crazy over it <laughs> yeah. but freedom nothing can upset your apple yeah. cart yeah. you've got freedom you also can't grow if you're in a cube you know if if yeah. you're safely and secured away that's basically like a jail you yeah. know it's a prison whereas the freedom you're free to grow yeah yeah the thing is the yeah. thing is it is a very uh what is the word um i cannot find the english word but anyway um uh, uh one hint think again about the short term and long term effects well the short term for the freedom is good because you're free but it comes with a lot of risks it means that uh it's you're left to your own devices whereas the safety and security which is of god is in the long term is better hmm interesting okay i uh, i will give you my take a freedom and risk starts with uh, sometimes maybe you are a bit uh, you are a bit shaky because uh, you have freedom but there are risks involved as well like you're going to whatever uh, what is the word uh, um, ha hang gliding or something like that freedom a great feel of freedom but there are risks involved but let's say you're hang gliding but without any risk that uh, you know that you're not going to fall. Then you're going to enjoy your freedom maximum, of course. And if you go, uh, if you put this in the long term, what will happen is that your world, your surroundings here, will grow. It will become bigger and bigger because you will dare more and more. That's the effect of it because you feel the freedom and you see, you can calculate the risk and you see that the risk, well, it's not very bad. So I can take more risk and more risk and your world is growing. Versus safety and security, the world of someone uh, focus on that is becoming smaller and smaller. That is the effect. The big world becomes smaller and you, first you are, uh, of, uh, you are afraid of getting past your own street where you live. And then you become afraid to getting outside of your house. And then you become afraid to getting outside of your sleeping room, etc., etc. So it your world obsessive. gets smaller. Sorry? It becomes obsessive. It in becomes your mind. an obsession, yes. And that is it becomes fear. A prison. Yeah, it becomes a prison which even which walls even close in on you. So mm -hmm. that is safety as if you start with safety and security like that, it's not gonna yeah. work. So freedom and risk is the is the is the way to go. That's the point, long term wise. Nice. I agree. Sorry, just to add quickly, P Peter, that was yeah. great what you just said. But uh, I was just gonna say too that safety and security seems more like to, to bring up maybe more like the Christian belief where it's based off of fear. It's based out of fear. It comes yeah, from exactly needing to be according to the standard, or else yeah. you're gonna get consequences. Exactly. Where freedom and risk is more out of love. Yeah, it's more out of doing something because you have trust and you yep. have faith towards yep. well obviously god right yes exactly the the, the christian belief is uh the result of a system that is based upon fear that's the point that's the mm -hmm. point okay mm -hmm. so the last two bu bullet points i'm going to go through them the, but those are important because those also talk about the universal laws we are going to go in, uh, uh, through them in the next slides. So the straight lines, so both are paradoxes, straight lines and free space. I think you know it already, but let's, let's take a look. So if you are a farmer, you are on your tractor, or I don't know how it's called in English, and uh, you yeah, yeah. want to make, tractor, okay, and you want to make straight yeah. lines. What do you do in order to make straight lines? You drive straight. Nope. Because if you look want to horizon. drive, if, if you if you want to drive straight, you will look at where you drive, trying to make uh, to make oh, lines okay, that yeah. are so as straight at, as possible. You look at your destination. Exactly. You look at that point 
the farthest point in the uh, at the horizon you that you can see you only focus on that and you drive toward that point and then the lines will be straight you see how hey, universal I, I laws a, work i got a good analogy for that because uh i started bowling when i was about uh, 15 years old and for the very first months I would hold my ball, run up to the line, and look about three feet ahead of me because there was markers, and I was looking at the middle marker to try and throw the ball right down the line real straight. Yeah. And then I changed my way of doing it. I was looking at the middle pin away down the bowling alley, and mm. I, I'd focus on that, and I was getting more strikes because yeah. I was focusing at the pin at the end and instead yeah. of two or three feet in front of my yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're using this as an, an as an analogy. So the road is our walk in this life and the destination is our expectation. And when we keep our eyes on our expectation, we don't exactly. swerve off the road. We are not mm -hmm. thinking about our walk. Not at all. Because if we think about how we walk in life, we will walk crooked. That's the point. The, the right. lines will not be straight. If we focus on the destination, where we are going, focus on Christ, who, whom we will see in the air, focus on our expectation, then we will make straight lines in our daily walk. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. So not even think about your walk. Don't think about that. Never. Makes think sense. about Yeah, think about your expectation. Think about the destination. Very important. Yeah. And it works in real life. You see the point? So yeah. it's a paradox. It looks like you want to look at the lines, but that doesn't work. You look at the destination. A farmer can make a straight groove only by focusing on a fixed point in the distance. Not on the groove itself, otherwise the grooves become very crooked. So the question is... That's a is, very good example. A yeah. very good example. Yeah. Yeah. So where it's do really we good. focus our attention? That's the point. Our attention. Next one. Our attention is on the destination. Exactly. And another example, same thing, universal law also. If we walk on a narrow path or a rope, uh, a rope wall and we are not allowed, the law says we are not allowed to deviate. We have to walk on that narrow line. What will we do? We will deviate. <laughs> the law said don't deviate. And you will deviate. That's how it works, the law, remember? So <laughs> we will stagger and stumble. And we, we have no room to stagger and stumble because we have to walk in a straight jacket or in a straight line. But if we walk on a wide, spacious road, and we are also allowed to walk beside the line or deviate, then we will be easy because we are allowed to do it. So we will walk very easily and making less and less mistakes. We will stumble and stagger perform. less. No. Yeah, exactly. You, you don't have, have to. to. I was talking yeah. with I was talking with someone and I'm 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 talking a Suriname guy and he, he understood it right away and he immediately he gave me an analogy. He said, Okay, so it's like we have a huge glass of of a great drink like a great juice or something like that huge glass that is way too much uh, for both of us he said so in that case he says man peter drink drink because <laughs> he knows that he will drink also and more than enough you see the yeah. point so it's exactly. it's it's like an abundance of juice that is that is what is awaiting us and we can be easy about it. And if the juice would be very little for both of us, then all of a sudden we look at each other. Okay, who wants it's more? It's a competition. Yes, there yeah. is going, there's going to be competition and there's because there is also scarcity. It's the principle of scarcity. And this principle is very abundant in Christianity. The principle of scarcity. So if we have abundance of grace, then all of a sudden we are free. We are free to sin. We are free to deviate. We are free to transgress. And because we are free, we are easy about it. Easy. And that makes uh, the, the, 
the consequence of that is that we sin less and less and less. Yes. That's how it trying, works. You're not trying to compete with the Christians for the love of God because the love of God is free and is infinite. Exactly. Exactly. That's the point. So, and there's more than enough to go around already, right? We, yeah, Christ, exactly. the highest being in the celestials, is already sharing his yep. allotment with us, yep. right? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and oh, abundant, abundance of abundance, of course. So, this is an important yeah. principle. Are we trapped with rules? Then we will walk crookedly. And only awareness of our freedom in Christ makes us walk straight. And it's a process, yes. but we will walk straighter and straighter. That is a guarantee. Yes, which, which does not mean that we're going to be perfect. No. It means that we're going to improve, but we're not trying to improve because we want to save ourselves or because yep. we want to please God. Yep. We do it because we want to because we want to walk in love, because God has shown us love. And we yes. want to we want to uh, reciprocate the same love to all those who encounter us. Exactly. And one thing is for sure we will definitely be happy. We will be much happier than uh, having to walk according to rules. That's the point. We will be happy. I think that was a great point too that you added, Liam, actually that it's not even uh, really for to try and prove anything to God. It's not trying to prove anything that you're able nope. to do anything better for God, exactly. right? He's, he's the one operating in us exactly. and we're just doing it through love. Yep. It's not through anything that we can achieve, obviously. We yeah. should know that God is sovereign, of course, but yes. It's like okay. uh, we, well, we were all slaves to sin. And what Christ did, or what God did through Christ, as he says, free from sin. And what we did is because our hearts were changed and because we see the true love and grace of God, we want to work for, for him freely now. Yep, so we're, definitely. So he's freed us from slavery, but yep. we want to work for him. And we don't e even have to, but we want to. Yeah, of course, yeah. definitely. That's what gra gratitude does. Next one, please. So let's look at the principle of law just to really understand the whole uh, uh, thing. I if we look at, if we educate or, or um, uh, bring up our children uh, in the principle of law, so the law in itself is good. So you are good, you want to be a good parent, you have good intentions, of course. But there will be external coercion because it's law you have to go you have to or you can you are not allowed to go to that party or something like that it assumes short term results because if you are as a parent are afraid that your 13 year old daughter uh, is going to a party and they will whatever do with her or whatever so you will You'll go to the him. yeah and fear will be your driver and that means that you will not allow them to go. And that's the easy way for you as a parent. So it assumes a short term result because your conscience and your ease is now your conscience is now at ease because you don't uh, you have forbidden them to go. But you have not taken into account their feelings. That's the point. And right. they want to go to that party. So I think the best way is another way. But let, we will go there soon. The result is that it stimulates or produces more offense. Because what will that, uh, that lady do, that young lady? She will climb she will out rebel. of her window. She will climb out of her window. And she will call her best friend, whatever, pick her up, and they will go to that party. Oh, yeah, that will be way worse. Of there, course. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up? I just said, Colin? been there, done that, sneaking out to go to a party. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. And it distrusts the other if you uh, would uh, educate like that. It distrusts. And that's also not good because you don't feel trusted as a child. You don't feel trusted by your parent. Uh, it races like a strict child escort, just like the law was our escort, so to speak. And it is our natural human tendency. tendency. So this is our first tendency if we are not trained to think the, op uh, the opposite way, so to speak. So yeah, let's let's which ties in which ties into what Paul is saying. All is allowed us. You can do those things and you could yeah. do those things to go out there to go to a party and get drunk yeah. and things like this. Yeah. And then you'll come back and then God will will be there with Christ to be like, yeah. was it worth it? Yeah. And he will he will <laughs> hug you in the toilet. Next yeah, morning. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he will hawk you while you're puking in the toilet. So yeah. 
this is a natural tendency so this is quote unquote intuitive but let's look at the next one the principle of grace the favor it's a gift so that means already oh you you, you feel favored as a child first of all so nothing in nothing uh, um, uh, to ask back so to speak so there's no condition to that gift it's unearned not a condition and realization of this makes that child happy because you they have received a gift no conditions N it's not uh, so that you have to now uh, uh, clean up your bed and now uh, clean the dishes no it's a gift just because i love you you see that's another story and yeah. it assumes a long-term results always long term is the best so it trusts the other and you feel trusted as the child so it educates also with own responsibility there you have it remember uh, uh ownership versus Wait, rules rubbish. ownership okay. versus rules ownership wins of course because mm -hmm. you have to also lear always learn to take own responsibility that is the point and so you learn your child to have their own responsibility also even while growing up best way to do it so the consequence is the tendency to transgress will be less and less and less that is the point so it works counterintuitively grace you see the point that is what we need to train ourselves with Titus talks this about that. This explains why the Christians hate grace because yeah. it, because it damages their pride. Yeah. Because if they don't deserve it, then they can't uh, they can't boast in this. Yeah. They they can't say, "Oh, I earned salvation," which exactly it destroys their pride, which yep. is why they hate grace. Yeah, and also their ego, and which is also short term focused, ego, pride, fear, all short term focused. That's True. the point. So, uh, okay, so focus on the long term, what awaits us. How about this one? Wherefore, we are not despondent, but even if our outward man is decaying, nevertheless, that which uh, within us is being renewed day by day for the momentary lightness of our affliction, lightness, <laughs> is producing for us a transcendently transcendent Ionian burden of glory. Whoa, I'm out of breath. Wow. Yeah. So this is, yeah. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this so is the affliction a is temporary. One. Yeah. It's not for it's not gonna go on forever and ever. Yeah, it's temporary. Exactly. Yeah. That is short term. That is short term. So this is important. Let's continue. Verse 18, at our not noting what is being observed, but at uh, but what is not being observed. You see the point? So focus on what is not being observed. For what that what is being observed like is temporary. Yet that what is not being observed is Ionian. That's long term. Yeah. That is the key. Yeah. So the key is focused on spiritual things. And which are they? I will repeat, faith, expectation, and love. Those are the three spiritual gifts that we have been uh, uh, given in this um, uh, administration of secret. And that involves invisible things present now, so the three uh, gifts, as well as invisible things that are now invisible yet, but will be visible pre visibly present later. Later means and in the oncoming eons. And ultimately, focus on 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Ultimately. What, does it, what does it say oh, again? Yeah, of course, of course, of course, yeah. Above it, all else, be pursuing love. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. That's, that's number one. Which of those three, of yeah, of those three, love is number one, of course. Because love will never stop. Faith will not be necessary anymore and expectation will yeah. also not be necessary anymore at a certain point in time when it is fulfilled. Yeah. But exactly. love will be yeah. always. And it was man that put chapters and verses into the Bible because yeah. every time I read 1 Corinthians 13, 
It has, I believe, 13 verses. Yeah. It should have had 14, 14. verses. 14, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. True, true. but that's just me. Yeah. Go ahead. Ah, true. Okay, let's continue. So again, same thing. If you want your body to follow, watch Christ closely and focus on our tremendous expectation. Next one. Amen. So boasting in his grace. <laughs> let's, let's read it first. It's better. Second Corinthians 1.12 For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience, uh, that in holiness and sincerity of God, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God, we behaved ourselves in the world, yet more superabundantly toward you. So it says it, in, in fact, already, boasting on our ignorance required f requires faith. But faith only comes from God. Even that is not, not from us as well. So this is about uh, real deep realization that faith comes from God and the grace that we are in is all from God and it is through faith it's one of the greater gifts of God when he humbles you he's yeah. gifting you like you don't even realize it yet oh yeah oh yeah definitely next one so faith we know faith is the only way uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, very well known, for by faith are we walking, not by perception. Belief is focused on what is not observable. So if you walk by faith, the magic word is you reckon something as something. You see the point? Yes. Yes. You reckon something as something. And that is the fact. You reckon something as a fact scripturally. It's the because scripture God fact. said so. Because God yeah. said, you are holy and flawless. Exactly. And in the eyes of the world, we are not. But in yeah. the eyes of God, we are. That's exactly. faith. So if you yeah, reckon, if you reckon that your old humanity has died with Christ, that means you are, sin doesn't exist anymore for you. Doesn't exist at all. About, about a half hour ago, you were uh, comparing the word reckon to calculate. And here we're at the word reckon again. Well, as yeah. you all know, I speak more French than I do English. Yeah. And we don't have a word for reckon in French. Okay. We're, we use we use the word calculé. Oh, calculé. wow. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> it was Great. easy for me to read the concordant version when I see the word reckon. Yeah. Uh, because it's like a second nature to me yeah. it, to use the word calculate. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, go ahead. But that, that's how it works indeed, yes. Okay, next one. So, and what is then the next step? Well, we realize that Christ died for us when? While we were still sinners. That's when. So justification is through Christ in his blood, and that is his office, his function, Christ. So in that sense, God functions as the judge who declares us innocent or righteous. But now, the deeper level, God's Son died for us while we were still enemies. And conciliation is through God's Son, and that is in the realm of family, in His death. So God is then the Father who sees and treats us as His Son. So that's deeper. So first the justification part and then the conciliation part. That's the deeper one. But they are that, always that, together. That sonship. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we went from worthless, from the sinners of the world to sons of God, adult yes. sons of God. Yes, yes, Fanta fantastic, fantastic. What a privilege. Romans 5.10 uh, confirms it. For if being enemies, being enemies, while we are enemies, we were conciliated to God through what? Not the blood of Christ, no, the death of his son, family, realm. You see, conciliation, family. Through the death of his son, much rather being conciliated, we shall be saved in his life. Yet not only so, but we are glorying also in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom we now obtained the conciliation. We are already reconciled to God, but the world not yet. But God is conciliating the world to himself through Christ, yes. through the death mm. of his son also. And, it, so and that's a process. all of creation will be at peace with God. And God is yeah. already ready, ready at peace with the entire creation. Exactly. With the believers and the non-believers. And God has always been at person. peace. Yeah, always yes. been at peace. True. Okay, next one. Very well known. Yet all is of God who conciliates us to himself through Christ and is giving us the dispensation of the conciliation, how that God was in Christ conciliating, still ongoing, the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them and placing in us the word of the conciliation. We are still living in this era, this administration of grace and uh, of secret, you can say, until the, the snatching away. And then after yep. that, God will then pour out his indignation uh, increasingly on the world until the cup is empty, and then he will start from scratch again. That's how he works. Yes. So what okay. we are right now, we are the ambassadors of conciliation. Yep. God is exactly. entreating through us, saying, be at peace with me because I'm at peace with you. Exactly. Yes. And what does evil do? Default, without uh, uh, a second party, it destroys itself. So God has to work hard, of course, relatively speaking, to keep evil around because he needs it, he needs it to fulfill his fantastic, magnificent purpose with all of creation. Why? Because if evil is left alone, it destroys itself. That's the tendency yes. of evil. Mm -hmm. So the presence of evil is an, import, port, uh, an important proof that God is there. That is proof of God's existence right there. Tell that to Richard Dawkins. <laughs> wow, that's a very good point, actually. Yeah. A very good point. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. Yeah, of course. So, so if you, uh, if you, let's say, if you want to end up in good behavior, let me put it like that. You don't think about behavior. You think first on who uh, are you dealing with? What is your environment? And then that will influence your mindset. Your environment can be scripture only. It can be other believers, as an example. It can be family, but if family is breaking you down, you don't uh, deal with them then that will influence your mindset and your mindset as we already mentioned will influence your behavior next one because it's a cycle this is the side this is the real truth because it starts with environment and then it influences our mindset and that influences our behavior and that again our better behavior so-called will make us look for an, an adjusted environment if that is necessary and that will adjust our mindset etc etc so it's a loop it's, it's a, a cycle point. it's yeah. a good point mm -hmm. yeah. and it all starts with the realization that we are saved and it's through grace and that we don't deserve that sal that salvation we don't deserve exactly. to be yeah. saved so but we, yeah, he saves us all through his grace exactly we realize that that we don't deserve it very important okay next one and of course we see that uh, in scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived, evil conversations are corrupting kind characters. There you have it. So and environment influences mindset and that influences behavior. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, do not become diversely yoked with unbelievers for what partnership have a righteousness and lawlessness or what communion has light with darkness so the expression diversely yoked applies to all types of relationships doesn't matter friends and family exactly. partners and things like this which is not to say that we just reject the world and we don't you know go out with our friends and our family because if you were in a relationship with a girl and you had kids before and she was an unbeliever you don't just abandon your of kids course, because course. they're unbelievers you know no, of course on the contrary, <laughs> you you take that, you take that also, and you live with that, of course. And that's also an, an investment in the, in the short term. 
because that will also form you to deal with those things in love. Very important. If you go back to the scripture it's in the middle of the screen, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, and say the opposite would also be true. Become yoked with believers. Believers, yes. And that's why I constantly have to have face chats with uh, yeah. my associates. And oh, yeah. I have to go into group chats because I have to be yoked with yep. believers. Yep. For me, that's one of the greatest gifts God gave me. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Great, you guys, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's good to hear this from other people as well. Be yeah. be immersed in this from other perspectives and to hear multiple people talking about it, right? It yeah. gives it helps strengthen all of our faith, I feel exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah. And oh, in yeah. love. And, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I mean, next I one. Become, I, I oh, sorry. I become automatically yoked to every doctrine because some of us don't believe in exactly the same thing but it talks about being yoked yeah. or unyoked to uh, don't become yoked to unbelievers but become yoked to believers, believers yes it's the person it's yeah. himself Definitely. or herself that i, yeah. I want to get to know more yeah not necessarily what level of belief they have in a no. certain doctrine it goes no. even beyond that yeah exactly it goes okay. to the person. Keep going. All right. So what is the result of all this? It will be inner peace. And we know this text already. Psalm uh, 46, 10. Relax and know that I am Elohim. I shall be exalted among the nations. I shall be exalted yeah. in the earth. Or 1 Timothy 4, 15. On these things meditate. In these be that your progress may be apparent to all that's fantastic that's yeah. good to see also and it applies to everyone individually also so a nice quote from albert einstein he who ha who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead his eyes are closed <laughs> yeah. he doesn't see anything <laughs> so <laughs> next one and this one is also a very great one uh, in terms of inner peace. 1 Timothy 6, 6. Now devoutness with contentment is great capital. So that means devoutness is also reverence. So that is good reverence, worshiping God from the right view of God. Contentment is also Content satisfaction. satisfaction. Sorry, you wanted to say something? Oh. Contentment is also satisfaction, that in which no need is felt. That is what it means. So that is true satisfaction. And great capital, uh, and that is, uh, yeah, great capital is going, it's going well in life in terms of you don't need anything else. It's going well in your life. It's smooth. It's going smoothly from one's own belief certainty, because that's the point of departure regardless of our perception it's about our faith our realization so this is very important so this is more the summary so uh, we went through universal laws about we, we talked about sin and evil the power of contrast uh, forgiveness though we didn't do that because i removed those slides uh, forgiveness versus justification what is that uh forgiveness presupposes so guilt forgiveness implies that you're guilty whereas justification is a declaration that you're not you are innocent you're yes you're innocent yeah, yeah. the power it also of faith. kind of points towards yeah. the 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 two separate evangels i guess right they're more yeah. about forgiveness and yeah. we're more about justification yes apart more from, more but uh, but, repentance. but please be mindful of the fact that the word uh, forgiveness also is used in ephesians 1 verse 7 we have the forgiveness because forgiveness just means letting loose but the forgiveness in the evangel of israel is conditional that's the point it's conditional ours is unconditional huge difference and the other way around also the word justification is also used in james but it's ju justification by faith plus works and without works faith is dead so you cannot mm -hmm. be justified without works in the evangel of israel 
not in our evangel. That's the difference. B with us, it is justification only through faith. That's the point. So exactly. yeah. the power of faith, uh, we already went through that. Justification only possible by faith. We know that. Next one. We went through this one, crucifying our flesh, only possible by, by focus on Christ. That's it. And the flesh gets no attention anymore. Uh, mindset, focusing on the new humanity, on the invisible love, uh, faith, and expectation. Uh, focusing our, our, our eye on Christ, etc., what he has done and about to do, our expectation. Environment influences our mindset. Paradoxes. We went through those, straight line, free space, etc. Evil destroys itself if not actively maintained. And, of course, the result, inner peace as long we, as we are in these bodies yet. And later it will be even greater. So, that's it. And the end. And, and the end. Out excellently. Just wait until God accomplishes his purpose. Oh, yes. That's oh yeah exactly Boom. this slide nice. right there is perfect that's a really good slide when we have the environment of realizing that we are saved and that we're justified apart from works of law yeah it's just solely by the faith of christ yep then that affects our mindset that that get, get, gives yeah. us a new mind because we're a new creation which affects our walk when we understand and we look at our expectation yes and that affects and that our god is at peace with us even in our sin even when we do miss the mark exactly yeah yes. Yes. Uh, yeah exactly yeah yes. and god yes. sees no sin in us and we yes. should have the same the same mind mindset as him yes. and that's faith that's totally exactly. about faith and if we realize that tremendous truth we will live like little children in all freedom do whatever we want be ourselves and do with all adjustments it with all transgression etc and you will see that in that freedom you will sin less so it's about focusing on the right things and that is focusing on christ and our expectation norm and you have something of christ the deus of christ is all about behavior yeah yeah it's and, how and, we behave yes and and god gave us this behavior so we're just living out what god had intended for us in the first place anyway. yes ephesians 2 10 his achievement are we and the works that we do are also prepared for uh, by him for us to walk into so that's it what can go wrong <laughs> exactly well yeah. that's the end of the pre yeah. presentation so yep. i'll stop streaming now yeah so awesome. that was really good that was excellent yeah. that's so Fantastic, important because yeah. we because we uh, we know these things but we need to be reminded of these things exactly. because this world can drag you down oh, so yeah. what this world is it's like the anti-faith it destroys yeah. the faith that god has gave gave oh, yeah. us. so we need to yeah. be reminded of these things to realize how god looks at you god Very looks at important. you and he sees a son he does Definitely. not see a sinner yeah. he sees yeah. son exactly exactly so important to realize that anyone else remark no, yeah, I thought that was it. a great presentation. I think everybody had some really good comments, which was awesome. Oh, so yeah, thank yeah. you all of you guys for yeah. for being with me and for inviting me, Peter. By the way, thank you very much. Of course, of course, and thank you guys for spending this time with you guys. Uh, I I love you all so much. It's likewise, like, well, brother. Happy. Likewise. Even if yeah. there was no recording, I'd just yeah. be as yeah. happy. Thank you. Yeah. I because wouldn't rather, I would rather, this is exactly what I'd love to be doing, which is hearing about this from you guys and yeah. seeing what you guys think too. Ed edification. Because we're, we're speaking with Christ. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. We're speaking yeah. with Christ right now. We, and we this is a high each gathering other. of, yeah. 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 Sorry, exactly. Peter, what were you saying? Uh, we edify each other. Yeah. So, yeah. so while this is, while this is a square that I'm looking at, it's a round table between brethren. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it is. Oh. It is. <laughs> this is the temple of god right oh here, yeah for. and you right. guys as well the temple right of here. god right exactly here. exactly yeah. <laughs> so on whose channel is this going to be publicized and when well i will uh, uh well it's on rivago uh, well uh it, it was my initiative uh, yeah i'm gonna post on mine as well because yeah, why okay. not you know, just okay. make sure, because this is important, you know, the yeah. message here is really like there's a lot of stuff in there, so it yeah. needs to be spread around. Yeah. Definitely. I hope I hope Johnny Green gets to see it. 
Well, otherwise, <laughs> if you or if you know people who are in contact with him, let them send it to him. Of course, it's very important. I would want him to see this, and I would w- would of want course. him to ponder on this. Of course, very important. Yeah. Okay. So well, do you think it's gonna go up later today, tomorrow, next week? Uh, Liam, what do you think? Because I wanted to do it Tuesday because Tuesday is like a good time for me personally in terms of order of yeah i can have it done by tuesday like i like i can do the editing tomorrow and then i can send it to you the day after that and by that time i can upload load it to mine as well so it'll be fine yeah okay 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 that's good so uh i think so tuesday it will be guys. published yeah. guys thank Love you for first of all you three thank you for joining me i'm really grateful and uh maybe you will join me in the next fellowship video who knows but thank you very much and watchers viewers thank you very much for watching and i hope you have been blessed and edified by this video all, all the best peace to you guys. i love you guys. love and peace Bye to people. you bye bye